There is something a little bit controversial that I had a discussion with somebody about the other day. It was probably the first person that actually agreed with my perspective on this. So it was enlightening to hear someone else feel this way. But I do believe that we can get too far too deep into some of the spiritual things that are out there, some of the personal growth and development things that are out there, some of the peak performance things that are out there. And I think that they can actually be detrimental in your manifestation process. And so uh, what I want to get across to you today is that your own personal sense of agency is the most powerful creator that you have. So what I mean by that is what you know within yourself is truth and everything else outside of you is open for interpretation. And if you allow it to become your truth, you can actually give your own personal sense of agency away. I am not someone that, I have gone and studied many different modalities and opened myself up to different ways of knowing things and understanding things. I know what my human design is. I know my gene keys, I've read it. I know a lot of the, my astrology and my life path number. And I've looked at a lot of these different things. I have a shaman practitioner that I have on monthly retainer that does energy healings for me. I've done past life healings. I've done shadow work. But what I find is the more we dig into those things and the more we seek the answers outside of us, we are allowing our personal sense of agency to be influenced by what's outside of us. And I would have us tread lightly in that. So let's use human design as the example. Many people are heavy into human design and I am not here to judge it, to knock it, to say anything negative about it, but simply to say that I proceed with caution and I take from my human design what serves me. So when I read my human design, I went, okay, yeah, I can see that makes sense. Yep. That's me. But there were some components of that, that I don't resonate with. And there were components of my human design that I actually felt are quite limiting. And I thought to myself, I'm not gonna believe that today. No, that's not the truth of who I am. And things like Mercury retrograde, you know, people are like, oh, we're in Mercury retrograde. We can't do this, we can't do that. We have to be careful with this. What if you believe you're not impacted by Mercury retrograde? What if you believe that it's not something that influences you, that, it's not this big, bad, scary, negative thing. And so you might notice that something in your life goes a little bit astray and your technology is not working or things are a little complicated. And then you find out it's mercury retrograde and you're like, oh, okay. But to act in the assumption that, oh, it's mercury retrograde, I better watch out. You're now putting an assumption in your mind that because it's mercury retrograde, I'm going to expect things to fall apart, to not go wrong, technology not to be right. And I'm now acting in the assumption that things are no longer working out for me and they're not as easy and effortless as they used to be. And so I'm not saying that mercury retrograde might not be real, but what I'm saying is it's not as real for me and my experience. Because what I believe to be true will be my truth. What I believe is going to happen will happen. And so I have uh, obviously worked with a lot of people over these past four years, and I've met a lot of people and learned about a lot of different modalities. And I made the decision that if something doesn't feel right, and if it doesn't feel in resonance to me, I'm gonna reject it. I'm going to reject it. So if I decide that I'm going to work with this Reiki energy healer and during our healing, she tells me something about doubts that I have in my mind about et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to simply just accept the belief that I'm doubting. I might ask myself, oh, is there doubt within you, Kathleen? And I'm going to know myself more and I'm going to go, yeah, maybe there is here and there, but really no. But what I have found is that people will come out of an energy healing and they'll be like, oh, she told me that I'm really doubting myself, that I don't have faith in myself and et cetera. And then you start acting in the assumption that you're doubting yourself, that you don't have faith. And then the information that you actually got from this person is no longer serving you. It's actually hindering you. I always say that I decide what I believe to be true. And I only believe the things that benefit my mission. If the mission is self-love, 
only believe the things that lead you towards self-love. If the mission is abundance and prosperity, only believe the things that lead you to abundance and prosperity. If you are somebody that wants more love in your life, follow that. If you're somebody that wants a higher level impact in this world, follow that. Uh, but I would just be very, very cautious about what you are seeking outside of yourself when everything is within. The other thing is I notice that there is an overwhelming sense of seeking information. So people are constantly watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts. And I know this is a bit ironic that I'm talking about this on a podcast, but I actually shut out the outside noise and allow my inner noise to be heard. And so I can tell when some people send me this YouTube video to watch, that YouTube video to watch, listen to this podcast, go watch this, do this. I can tell that they're more outside of themselves that they are inside of themselves. And so that's when I will say, what would it be like if you didn't watch anything or seek any information today at all? What would it be like this week if you stop seeking outside of yourself and seek inside of yourself? So I do believe that my level of awareness and understanding is more in tune and connected to the soul's information and knowledge. So I don't need to seek as much outside of myself than what's inside of myself. And I know what I know because I choose to believe what I know. I have a beautiful program that's called a millionaire. And that program is a healing program. It's a transformative program. We reprogram the subconscious mind. We connect into spirit to guide the ego, all those beautiful things. But what I've noticed is we give a lot of value. So there's a course, there's a workbook, there's my weekly live teachings. We have embodiment sessions like six days a week with my team. So you can come on to the group facilitated sessions and learn how to embody. But what I always say is that the work is not done in the course or on my live teachings or on the embodiment sessions. The work is done inside yourself in solitude. So it's when you are with you. And I never did that. I always had music playing, podcast going, on a call, learning and growing, watching TV, listening to music. There was never time spent with myself until 2020. And when I decided to spend time with me and get to know me, you can even say like, you're gonna date yourself, you know? You're, you're gonna have a relationship with yourself going forward. This is where it all shifted. So it isn't about your best friend helping you to change. It's about you going within and asking, what do I wanna change? And not many of us are wanting to look in the mirror. Not many of us are wanting to look at that and to be with ourselves because it's uncomfortable to sit in silence with yourself, to notice yourself, to be a witness to who you are and how you show up in this world. And so what we will do is we will be with people and we will distract ourselves and we will ask for more information. We will watch more videos. We will take more notes. But the embodiment happens in the silent moment between you and you. It's when you notice a thought and you say, oh, that thought wasn't very nice. When you notice a feeling and you go, I feel unworthy right now. It might be, I'm feeling insecure. And instead of saying this person is making me feel insecure, you're noticing that you're choosing to be insecure. And so what would I like to be and how would I like to show up? The personal sense of agency. We so often seek validation from others. So we want other people to give us the love. We want other people to give us the accolades. We want the business success and the awards to tell us that we're good enough and that we're worthy. But when you actually go within and you develop that relationship with yourself and you validate yourself, you no longer need to be seeking outside. So I'm not here saying that every single person that is listening to all the podcasts or learning human design or knows their gene keys in astrology shouldn't be doing that. I think it's a self-awareness of, am I with myself enough? Do I know and understand myself enough? Am I regulating myself and my vibration? So you can listen to seven podcasts on changing your vibration, but never go within and change your vibration. You can know it on a conscious level, but you could actually be not experiencing a change in your vibration because you are not embodying it. 
So I really want us to be the authentic and genuine embodiment of an elevated version of ourselves. And that happens when you are with you. Our coaches, mentors, courses helpful? Absolutely. They provide you with a roadmap, but you must follow the map that has, has been drawn out for you. And the following of the map isn't someone doing it for you. So I think sometimes we think that the coaches, the mentors, the programs are gonna do it for us, that simply by listening to what they say that we will change through osmosis. But I've had to look at some hard truths and realities of who I am. I look in the mirror often and I ask myself, how can I be kinder to myself? How can I love myself more? How can I be more inspired and empowered? How can I choose differently? How can I allow more love in? How can I make a bigger impact? And asking myself those questions lets me look at myself and make a change and choose to be somebody different. And I am really the embodiment of this information. If you are someone that's close to me in my life, you will see that we have conversations about dramas in our life, but that conversation is followed up by, okay, how, who do I need to be? How can I change? What's the growth here for me? What's the reflection? What's the awareness? How can I be a better person? And how can I be more responsive instead of reactive? So let me give you an example of what I mean by your own personal sense of agency and going inward versus seeking from outside of you. So let's say you're somebody that is recently single and you're dating for the first time and you're out there and you're seeing somebody and you're feeling really insecure. You're feeling like this person isn't responsive to me. They, they sound, one minute they wanna hang out, the next they don't. And they're giving you mixed signals and you're feeling like you don't know where you exist or what this means and it's making you feel insecure. Someone who is avoidant that doesn't want to go within and do the work will say that it's their fault. They're, they're creating this, they're creating that, they're not responding, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you'll try to change them to want you more so that you're more secure. So you're seeking the sense of security from their behavior and hoping that one day they will give you what you need to feel secure. Another way of avoiding might be you're going to go online and you're going to watch YouTube videos about how to be secure and how to get rid of your anxious attachment style. But the real work actually happens in the moment where you go within and you stop watching the videos and you stop trying to change the person and you say, okay, how can I be security for myself right now? How can I feel safe and secure in me in this moment? And so first you have to recognize you feel insecure. You know, a lot of people aren't willing to even look at that. They just think the other person is, is bad or wrong and, and pass judgment. But really what this is showing you, this person is showing you that you do not feel secure in who you are. You don't love yourself enough. You don't feel worthy enough. You don't feel empowered enough. Because if you did and somebody gave you mixed signals, you wouldn't give them the time of day. You'd be like, I'm not here for mixed signals. So we want to create that sense of security, that grounding within ourselves. So the awareness comes from, okay, I feel insecure. And then the next awareness comes, what can I do to give myself validation? What can I do to give myself safety and security from within? This isn't a YouTube video. This isn't astrology. This isn't my Reiki energy healer. This isn't trying to change him. This is me truly saying, how can I get that sense of security and safety within myself in this moment? So what can I do right now, an action that comes from a secure place right now today? And so whenever somebody says to me, I'm feeling some kind of way, I say, okay, well, you got to do something in the opposite. So the secure decision might to message that person and to say, Thank you so much for your time. I have appreciated you so much. It doesn't sound like you're open and available for anything in this moment. If you become available and open in the future, and I happen to be too, amazing. But if not, that's okay too. And move forward. That will be a secure act of faith. It will come from confidence. Um, and that comes from directly inside of yourself and, and will absolutely change you. But that's what I mean by this work is done in solitude between you and you. And that is the awareness of this work. And so, yes, I will help you to manifest more money and more love and more fame and more accolades and better health and to release weight and all that kind of stuff. But it's up to you to do it. I cannot do it for you. So I hope that this little bit of a controversial topic today allows you to take some ownership back 
some radical responsibility and to start to make change in your life for the better because there is higher levels of everything that you're experiencing right now and you don't even know how good it can get and the limit does not exist. <laughs>